By the way, Danko and Levon, they all told, and Robertson, they all told me that Bob had always talked when he when they were with him mm -hmm. about putting together a traveling carnival, right, right. a variety was, show, was that was always his ambition. Okay. So it was a long fulfilled ambition. <laughs>
sort of like you would go to at the Brooklyn Fox at Alan Freed or something. So the the way the show was... Did you do the arrangements? Because what was Bob's whole... Because it radically altered his repertoire, which he always does, anyway. Yeah, You know, I mean, the band were used to playing his stuff. Yeah. So they kind of played it kind of like the band playing, you know... Yeah, they they put their own stamp on it. You radically... Well, you didn't want to sound like the band. Right. You didn't want to sound like the records. Right. And Bob is has always mm -hmm. changed his shit up does, yeah. from, from album to album, yeah. keeps him guessing. Try, he doesn't want to get bored. Right. And you don't want him to get bored. So, of course, you want to reimagine every tune mm -hmm. and try and rearrange it and make it unrecognizable, as right. people would that's, sometimes that's critic. Yeah, show. but that was the challenge. You electrified a lot of his early acoustic songs. You, you went back, I know, on the first, second albums, the times they were... Oh, yeah, the totally, million. totally, man. I wanted to rock him up, man. Yeah. I wanted to get more contemporary. Mm -hmm. I figured the, you know, the, the folks should he done that. Mm -hmm. Let's reimagine these tunes in a, in a more commercial at the time manner, namely electric. So the, the way the show was structured was uh, everybody in the band really was a front man in their own That's right. True, yeah. Ronson had had his own records out. Sure, sure. McGuinn had had uh, many hits. Uh, T-Bone is a singer songwriter of note and already was at the time. I had my own band. Right. Everybody in the band had their own thing. So therefore, we would open the show with each of the guys in the backup group doing a tune okay. to warm the crowd up and also do a sound check mm -hmm. the same way. So uh, that would be like the first half hour or so and getting the audience warmed up. It's a four-hour show, too. Yeah, yeah. So you figure the first half hour, people are still finding their seats anyway. <laughs> so we're like, wear music to find their seats by for the sound men to get the room right, you know, everything and uh, us to get warmed up. Uh, then we'd bring out a succession of opening acts. We'd had Ramblin' Jack Elliott, right, who, by the way, was the missing link between Woody Guthrie and Bob Dylan. Okay, you know right. about that? Yeah. Ramblin' Jack was Woody Guthrie's accompanist, mm -hmm. and therefore was the, uh, if you will say, the precedent for Bob Dylan. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. So we had Ramblin' Jack come out and do a bunch of tunes. And by the way, Ramblin' Jack and I went way back into the village scene. I used to back him up with uh, his solo act. So we had Ramble Jack. Then we would have um, Roger McGuinn come out and we'd do the Bird's Greatest Hits. How can you go wrong with that? <laughs> the guy's got his electric squalls, his Rick and Backer, man. We're doing turn, 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 and you know, all those fucking tunes. And it's, you know, Jesus Christ, man. It's the greatest hits, man. Right, right. So, so we're doing. Was that, at the, that was the time you did um, the, uh, uh, Cardiff Rose with him? Was that during? That was later. That uh, was, was later. later. Yeah, 70, yeah, yeah. Okay. 76. Okay, that's that was later. after the final Rolling Thunder right. review. And the, and the crowd reaction to Rolling Thunder? Yeah. Uh, by the way, Cardiff Rose, the name of the group was Thunderbird, B Y R D. Okay. Yeah, right. Which was Thunderbird. One of records afterwards. Yeah, right, exactly. So that was. Uh, Thunderbird was Ronson, myself, Howie Wyeth, and David Mansfield. Okay. And, um, and then the yeah. band is captured on Hard Rain, which was kind of a strange That's that's, um, that's from the, uh, well, is that's that from the... the, the Thunder? Uh, that, let me just backtrack a second. Right. To the uh, first tour, so we had um, everybody in the band would do a tune. Okay. Then we had Roger McGuinn do his greatest hits. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, Ramble Jack would do his greatest. Then Roger Bunker would come out. Then Joan Baez would come out and do a bunch of tunes. Right. And then we would have like a local guy from wherever we were. If we were in Toronto, we'd have the, the great, um, uh, who's, who's the great Canadian singer-songwriter? Thank you very much, right. Gordon Lightfoot. <laughs> we'd have Gordon Lightfoot. If we were, uh, whatever part of the country we were in, we'd have the great <laughs> local dude come and, and do his tunes. Gordon Lightfoot, the Canadian Dylan. The he's, the, he's the man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, then eventually Bob would come out and do some tunes. And then we'd take an intermission. And then uh, after the intermission, we'd start up again with uh, more guest stars. So it was like a whole variety show, like the Alan Freed show or Murray the K show or something. Yeah, yeah, I remember. So the second Rolling Thunder sh uh, tour, which was... Um, in 76, okay. uh, that was in a different part of the country. The first one was in the Northeast. The second one was in the Southeast okay. and Southwest. That's when the one you guys did the TV special. That was the right. Hard Rain special, okay. as you were alluding to. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. And for that one, they got rid of Ramblin' Jack and put Kinky Friedman in yeah. there. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. I just work here, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
And um, yeah, you put out the hard rain. It's, I, I'm glad it was rectified later in the bootleg series when they put out the Rolling Thunder review, so you can get. I was, show. yeah, I was I, too, I was man. Not, what were your feelings about them just dropping Hard Rain, which was kind of sloppy? I think they just sort of. Yeah, but it's also punk. Yeah, it's, it's, I like, I like that aspect though. It's, yeah, and okay. it's it's played under terrible conditions, which is one yes, of the reasons right. it's so it sounds so sloppy. Yeah. It was played under a leaky canopy on a rainy day. Yeah. <laughs> and people are getting shocks. I was getting shocks, man. It's like you're playing them. Oh, fuck! Right, just like you, you go up to your mic to sing your part, and a spark comes this far to your fucking lips, man. It's like, you know, it was, they didn't have the grounding shit no, together at all then, man. It was like the primitive days of PA systems. And um, a leaky canopy on a yeah, rainy yeah, day. Yeah, it was like, so that's one of the reasons that record okay. is so raw. It's because the conditions, it. yeah, it's awful. And um, I mean, you could feel some, every so often you'd feel a shock coming through your soles of your shoes if you weren't wearing rubber soles. Man, it was like a terrible gig. But uh, it came off because we'd already played like two months of dates, so we were tight. But we were pretty much on radar. Thank you for joining us for this two part episode. We will hear more from Rob in the coming weeks. And on the next Know Your Bass Player, we revisit some of our guests from the UK. See you then.